the last last day of summer, chapter 5. The word is platypus. Bushy, coarse hair fluffed from the maybe a leg. Another long something lowered into view. It was hairless and twitched like a puppy's nose. Warm air puffed from what must be a snout fogging the window. The cloudy glass cleared quickly, revealing more of the thing's head, including the circular edge of an eye that was as big as a manhole cover. Freeze! She became a mannequin posed in a bad dance move. Fighting the urge to argue, Otto did as told and took on a stiff pose like a robot about to do, go jogging. He stared bravely into the creature's eye without blinking, and it stared back. Whatever this beast was, it seemed to ignore all the frozen things and people spread around town. If it only went after things that moved, then they'd be safe if they remained stone still. Hopefully. Staying stone still was easier said than done. Otto hadn't thought his freeze pose through, having put more weight on his left leg than his right, as if he were getting set to run a race. Now that left leg was growing tired and felt moments from quivering, his eyes watered from no blinking, his nose itched. The tag on his t-shirt tickled the back of his neck. Otto focused on the creature, which was large enough to be a monster, but not really gruesome like a monster. His eyes were a soft brown like fall leaves. Its steam-puffing snout something like a duck's beak. A strange and funny word, platypus, came to mind. It almost made him giggle. That would have been bad. Sweet, dampened Otto, no, sorry, sweat dampened Otto's forehead. A bead ran towards his eye. The platypus thing puffed one last gout of steam, then turned away, continuing slowly down the street in the same direction as the mysterious mob. She and Otto maintained their stances for a few moments after the creature was no longer visible. They waited until the vibrations of its lumbering footsteps ceased before daring to move. When they finally relaxed their muscles, they found themselves gasping, more exhausted by stillness than running a hundred-yard dash. Sometimes waiting was the hardest thing of all. What was that? Otto knew deep down the word platypus wasn't exactly right. I don't know, said she, but we're going to need a bigger net. Chapter 6. Elephants. It is. Hey there, fellas, Mr. Archie said. Was that an earthquake? The boys exchanged glances. Neither wanted to lie to Mr. Archie, but they also didn't want to frighten him by telling him there was a big, strange beast in Fry that he couldn't run away from, even if he wanted to. Otto gave Sheed a I-don't-know-what-to-do shrug. Sheed slapped his forehead, then stepped forward, mumbling. I'll take care of it. Mr. Archie, he began, it wasn't an earthquake. It was more like an elephant, but not an elephant. Really? Sheed felt terrible, thinking he'd scared Mr. Archie, but then, I love elephants. Don't you love elephants, Anna? From her aisle, Anna said, sure do, especially when they spray water from their trunks. What about you, Petey? They poop real big, but other than that, they're all right, Petey said from the back of the store, I guess. She'd said, actually, Otto grabbed Sheed's arm, shook his head, whispered, I think grown-ups hear what they need to sometimes. Sheed stroked his chin, considering, then agreed. Actually, Mr. Archie, I think we're done shopping. Well, that was fast. I'll just add it to the tab. When I can move again, I mean. Since the last time they'd saved the city, those laughing locusts were a pretty big deal, Mayor Ahmed had opened an account in Otto's and Sheed's name for, for emergencies. Good thing, too, because being legendary didn't pay well, or at all. Thanks, Mr. Archie, they said together, gathering all their goods into a couple of canvas bags they could hang from their handlebars. Bye, Anna, said Sheed. Bye, boys. Good luck, Otto said. See you later, Petey, I suppose. With supplies in hand, the cousins stepped to the glass double door, separating them from the bright day, and paused. Sheed's palms were sweaty. Otto's tummy did flip-flops. They were afraid. Logan County was nothing if not surprising. They'd faced many scary things, but nothing like a bendy man, giant platypus, or frozen time. Otto swallowed a lump in his throat. Grandma says there's nothing wrong with being afraid. You can't be brave without fear. Sheed recited one of Grandma's many wise sayings. They thought about her words a lot when facing the strange things in the world. Now she needed their help. They would be brave for Grandma and everyone else in Fry. It was what legends did. They each pressed a palm against the door and pushed on.